witch trials in Westfield, now part of Middletown, Connecticut, were part of a broader witch hunt fervor that swept through the region in the late 17th century in the United States. While not as infamous as Salem, these trials saw multiple accusations, detailed interrogations, and deep fear of the supernatural. Catherine Harrison, a prominent figure in the Westfield trials. She was a former resident of Weathersfield, who after her husband's death found herself isolated and increasingly under suspicion. She had a history of conflicts with neighbors, including disputes over property lines and accusations of dishonesty. These personal tensions made her an easy target for witchcraft accusations. Neighbors claimed that Harrison had the ability to control spirits, cause illness, and interfere with livestock. Witnesses testified that she had appeared to them in spectral form. This was a key accusation in many witch trials. Despite her denials, Harrison was convicted, though later appeals and legal uncertainty did save her from execution. Her case set a precedent in Connecticut for the handling of witch trials, however. Goodwife Elizabeth Seeger. She was another Westfield resident accused of witchcraft. Seeger, who had a reputation for being outspoken and occasionally at odds with the Puritan ideals of submissive womanhood, was accused of using witchcraft to harm her neighbors. One of her accusers claimed that Seeger had used malignant magic to spoil crops and milk. Another accusation suggested she had summoned spirits to torment a local farmer. The intensity of these charges reflected the deep-seated anxieties about social order and gender roles in Puritan society. Seeger was convicted. But after appeals and support from several prominent community members, her conviction was overturned. Rebecca Greensmith, along with her husband, Nathaniel Greensmith, faced accusations of witchcraft after a series of strange occurrences in Westfield. The Greensmiths were known for their difficult relationship with their neighbors, which was a common trigger for witchcraft accusations. Rebecca was accused of holding secret meetings with other suspected witches in the woods near their home. She allegedly admitted under duress that she made a pact with the devil and attended these witches' meetings. Rebecca's confession, likely coerced, was pivotal in her conviction and execution. Nathaniel was also impacted and executed, despite his claims of innocence. As with many witch trials in Connecticut, including those in Westfield, spectral evidence played a major role. This type of evidence, where witnesses claimed to see the accused spirit or specter performing acts of witchcraft, was notoriously unreliable, but widely accepted at the time. It allowed accusers to claim that they had seen the accused in dreams or visions committing evil deeds. Even when the accused had physical alibis for their whereabouts. Catherine Harrison, for example, was said to have appeared in her accusers' spectral form flying through the air and tormenting them. Could you imagine? The Westfield trials took place during a period of intense religious fervor and social instability. Puritan society in Connecticut, much like the rest of New England, was governed by strict religious doctrines and deviations from the norm. Whether in behavior, speech, or even misfortunes like crop failures, they were all often attributed to witchcraft. Women, particularly widows or those who defied traditional gender roles, they were more susceptible to accusations. The combination of local disputes, religious extremism, and the harsh realities of colonial life, crop failures, infant mortality, illness, it all created fertile ground for accusations. And the Puritans believed that the devil was actively working in their midst, seeking to disrupt the godly community that they established in the New World. 
By the late 1600s, the fervor surrounding the witch trials in Connecticut began to wane. There was a lot of backlash against the trials. Courts became more skeptical of spectral evidence as cases like Catherine Harrison showed. There was growing legal hesitation to execute based on such flimsy grounds. However, for those who had already been accused and murdered, this change in attitude came too late. While the Westfield trials are not as extensively documented as those in Salem, the names of individuals like Catherine Harrison, Elizabeth Seeger, Rebecca Greensmith, they remain tied to the tragic history of witchcraft accusations in colonial New England. The Westfield community, like many others in Connecticut, was caught in a web of fear, religious extremism, and social tension, which all led to the deaths of several innocents and the persecution of so many more. The echoes of these trials can still be felt in the region's history, where the names of those accused serve as a reminder of the dangerous intersection of fear, religion, and social order. These are Interesting Things with J.C.